<laughs> hey everybody, Joy here. It's Monday, October 16, 2023. Are you enjoying fall? Woo, it's 65 degrees in this room right now. <laughs> Jerry said it's really cold outside. But I like it cool, as you know. Sometimes I think I like it a little bit too cool. But I wanted to show you my finished sunflower quilt. It's finished except for the binding. And the reason it's finished except for the binding is I'm not sure what color binding I want, so I want you to tell me. I'll probably have it done before you can tell me, but I'll show you anyway. If you hear sizzling in the background, that's my iron heating up. See, you should do this anyway. This is called auditioning for borders and for bindings. Auditioning, if you're not sure what you want to do, just Put up your choices and look at them. So what do you think? Brown or black? Let me look. Ooh, I like the black. I think I like the black. I think I choose black. It just makes it pop. And the brown just sort of fades away because there's so much brown and there's just that little bit of black. So I think I'm binding it in black. So we solved that problem right off. <laughs> One of you asked me to show you how I put this on the long arm and how I quilted it with my long arm. Well, I already had it done before I read that, so. But I promise I will do it on my next little quilt. Okay, how about that? And my next little quilt, what is it gonna be? Well, I have three choices. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, if you get an electric quilt, you're not gonna be able to quit. It is so much. Even if you sew garments, learn how to quilt with electric quilt. It is so much fun. So electric quilt gives you choices of what kind of quilt you can make. You'll just say, I want to make a brand new quilt. And it'll say, okay, do you want to make one like this? Or do you want to make one like this? Or do you want to make it like be on point? It'll be um, like 3D or it'll be horizontal with just squares in it. And there's one called custom set. And I wrote down, if I can find what I wrote down, that would be a small miracle. Here it is. If you want to really see how this works and how much fun it is, here's a video. You don't need me to make one. Somebody already made one at Electric Quilt and it's very well done, very easy to follow. So go to YouTube, search for electric quilt and the electric quilt videos will come up or what i searched was eq8 tutorials and these all came up so there is one called here's the title of it how to design a custom set quilt in eq8 then there's another one which on my computer is right underneath it called easy draw so watch those two. You don't, you don't need me to show you because somebody already did in great detail. As you know, my friend Philly and I subscribe to the Little Quilt Club at Laundry Basket Quilts with Edited Sitar. We got month one, month two, and month three. When we got month three, we didn't like it. Evidently, the whole rest of the world loved it. But we didn't like it. It had a little bitty quilt in it and then another little bigger quilt in it. And I've told you before, it had sideways baskets. I didn't want sideways baskets. I wanted straight up and down baskets. So, and it's expensive. It's $69 a month. And Philly's having to downsize, you know. She moved out of her big house. She's moving into an apartment. And, you know, I didn't want her spending $69 a month so she could do what I was doing. You know, we do that. She buys something, I buy it. I buy something, she buys it. So I said, let's don't do this anymore. And I said, we'll just make our own little quilts. And she said, we could use electric quilt to do it. And I thought, I think I told you this in another video. Oh, I think I own that. <laughs> so, you know, she bought eight. I bought eight. We both have the current one. And she has been moving, packing up her house, getting ready to move. She has to move tomorrow, actually. And so she, we haven't been able to Zoom, but I haven't been able to stop. I'm addicted to this thing. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a short-term addiction because I don't have time for long-term ones. <laughs> but Edna came out with the fourth month, Little Quill. 
and she's never ever shown it ahead of time before. She usually doesn't show it till the end of the month, but this time she showed it at the beginning of the month because I thought, I think, I think Edita thought if people saw it, they would all want to do it. And I saw it and I went, oh, well, wouldn't you know, I quit the club, I unsubscribed, and now she comes out with a really cute one. So I thought, lightning fast mind. I'm going to see if I can make that quilt myself, an electric quilt. And I have determined that these quilt people have electric quilt. And that is how they take their quilts and they make them to start with and they color them. You can put anybody's fabric in there. You just download it. And I put all her fabrics in mine and because uh, I love her fabrics. And I just bought another $200 worth of her fabrics <laughs> because I figure I'm going to need them for my little quilts. You can make a quilt, your quilt number one, and that's what happens, and she'll show it in some line. Well, then she'll get a new line of fabric out, and she'll recolor the quilt. And I kept thinking, how does she do that? How does she make these quilts up so fast? Oh, my goodness. She'll have color two, color three, color four. Well, hello. This is how you do it in electric quilt. And I know it because this is her quilt for month four, and I was able to make it exactly, exactly the same. It has the same exact house, the same exact stars, the same exact, I made it the same exact size, using custom set. And is this Edita's fabrics? No, this is just anybody's fabrics. But I do have her fabrics in there now, so I can recolor. Or did I already? Is this her fabrics? Yeah, this is her fabrics. I, I'm telling you, I can't quit. I keep doing it. So this is her fabrics that I downloaded from what you do. You go to the manufacturer. Her fabrics are manufactured by Andover. So I went to Ann Dover's website and I looked up Edita Sitar's fabrics and they have every line they've ever made for her. And you click on it and it gives you the images and you can download all those images to your electric quilt. It's awesome! I love it! So here is my final version of what I'm going to make. And you can see these are all her fabrics that I put in the stars. Awesome! Even the red. So what I did was I tried to make a star. Now the stars are tiny. The stars are almost as tiny as this. There's my first star. Well, I had issues with the flying geese. Now my friend Becky Thompson just did a a morning video. She's on every morning. Can you believe that? Maybe not on Sundays. I'm not sure she's on even on Sundays. No, she's on Sunday afternoons. But she quilts every morning from 7 to 8 and does live videos. I don't know where she gets the energy for that. Number one, I wouldn't want anybody to see me at 7 a.m. in the morning, I guarantee you. <laughs> You'd think I'd just escaped the nursing home or something the way I look in the morning or I was related to Einstein and the hairdo. Okay. So I made this, and I started watching Kimberly at the Fat Quarter Shop. I wasn't really crazy about her quilts when I watched her a couple times years ago, so I never have subscribed to her. But she has a really, really good video showing you three different ways to make half square triangles. And she said that no matter how careful you are, or how hard you try, some of the ways you just always have issues and they're not perfect. But she said, I'm going to show you a way that is perfect. Well, the way that is perfect requires a certain ruler. I think it was made by Eleanor Burns. So I ordered that certain ruler, and this one's fine. I mean, I could use it, but um, I'm getting that ruler because I want mine to be perfect. And when I get them all sewn together, I want the points to line up right. You know, it's one thing to do this. It's another thing to sew two of them together and have the points be right. So this is my fun, fun, fun copy of Edita's month four little quilt club now let me say on editor's behalf when you get her quilt you get pre-cuts for it you get all the fabrics her little quilts come with the fabric and some months come with pre-cuts my uh little cabin came with pre-cuts this one comes with pre-cuts so i highly highly recommend it if you think it's fun, you want to do it, and you're not as picky as I am about upside down baskets, hey, just let her do your little quilts for you because she's amazing. I think I showed you this one. This is one of the quilts I've made for a little quilt. 
that I'm going to make for up on my ceiling. I think I already showed it to you. But I haven't put Editas fabrics in this yet. And this is an Editas design. I made this up myself. This is a Joy original <laughs> with a quilt from uh, EQ8. And then, I don't know if I've shown you this one. This is the first one I was going to make for fall. But, I mean, I'll just show you how nutty I am. I don't like that the basket isn't in the center. I wanted this uh, wheelbarrow, wagon, whatever, in the center. And I couldn't make it be in the center because of the handle. <laughs> I know, I'm nuts. I could have put some falling leaves over here. That's what I should do is put some falling leaves or a tree branch. Oh, that would be cute. Put a tree branch and then some falling leaves or one fall leaf hanging on it. You know, just barely hanging on. I'm telling you, I just can't quit doing this. It is so much fun. <laughs> okay, I have a list of things I'm supposed to tell you. In my video before my last video, two videos back, I was wearing a garment that I just made, and there was a wrinkle right here. And I said, what do I need to do to fix this wrinkle? And many of you said, I think everybody that answered said I needed to do a bigger full bust adjustment. No. What I need to do is pull the shoulder up and change the shoulder slope in that pattern, and then it will pull that wrinkle up. So remember, there's two ways. <laughs> there's two ways to do everything. So that's about the wrinkle and the shoulder slope. Now, the next one, somebody asked me, how do I do the binding? Well, since I haven't put the binding on the sunflower crow quilt yet, I will show you, um, maybe I'll do it in a little while, and I'll put the camera over there, and I'll show you how I put my bindings on. Now that I've decided I really do like the black, better than the brown. Okay? So, you can just zoom right over there and see it, but it's going to take me probably the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, I wanted to tell you this. These fabrics, the green, the yellow, the brown, the black, are cut out and they're just put on here raw. The edges are not finished. The edges are not sewn around at all. Because, number one, it's going on the ceiling. Number two, it's never going to be washed. It has steam seam behind it, or it has, this one has heat and bond. So they're all glued on. And I made the quilt pattern so small that there's lots and lots of stitches. The only thing it missed is his eyeball. So I may take him to the sewing machine and sew around his eyeball just to make sure it doesn't fall off. But if it did, I don't know how easy would it be to just glue on another eyeball. It even sewed around his little feet. So I think this turned out super cute. I hope you can see the stitching. I'll, uh, I'll do a close-up picture of it. I'll put a picture of it right here. So, that's it. Isn't that a cute quilt pattern? That is called, if I remember right, I got it from Urban Elements. And it's called Love Grass. I don't know what the love part is about it. There's no hearts in it. But I wanted to put grass on here. And this wasn't what I had in mind. But when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, that's darling. So I bought it. It was $12, I think. And I bought it and I quilted it with that. So I really, really like that. I think that's just, I think it turned out super cute. Is there anything else I was supposed to tell you? Watch the EQ videos if you like them. Uh, Jerry's kitties. Jerry's kitties are all quilted. I have the binding sewn on the front. And this is another thing why this might take late this afternoon. Because I need to get his binding turned around to the back and get it sewn on. So I've got two quilts to bind this afternoon. And um, probably some wash to do and some cooking to do. Oh, I do. I have to make applesauce. I have to go downstairs and make applesauce. You want to see me make applesauce? It's 11 o'clock. Hey, let's go downstairs and do that. Let's go make some applesauce. So here we are. We're in the broken corner of the kitchen. <laughs> we had to take the um, appliance garage off. There was an appliance garage here and I loved it. But every time we had to do something with the countertops, we had to remove this cabinet and this cabinet. And I didn't want to do that anymore, neither did Jerry. So we removed the cabinet that was down here, and that's why everything's missing back here. 
and when we get our new countertops again because they mess these up the sink isn't in the middle and these things aren't right so um, we're going to put the uh, Corian all the way to the top here I wanted to do it to start with but we have to wait till Jerry's ready for these things okay so you have to have a cup of coffee that's the first thing you have to have ah, even though it's late in the morning so we're going to put it back there I certainly don't want to knock it on the floor. <laughs> so, where's my recipe? Here's my recipe. Remember, Jerry bought me this for Christmas. Year before last, or was it? Yeah, I think I've had it over a year. So, year before last Christmas. Or maybe it was last Christmas, because it's been almost a year already. So, he bought me this. So, I try to use the recipes in it. But I haven't had good luck with the recipes. I don't know if you'd call it good luck. I just don't care for her. For the taste of them or the texture of them or the whatever so this is called super quick applesauce and what does it say cook on high pressure for eight minutes use quick release and i put no now the first time that i made this the directions say use quick release i used the quick release and apple had it over here the applesauce blew up on the ceiling blew all over the floor blew on me blew oh. It was horrible. It was the biggest mess you ever saw. So, first thing I did was cross out quick release. <laughs> I mean, applesauce can cook forever, you know. It, it just makes, I don't know why she said that. Use quick release and remove the lid. Don't do that. You cook it on high pressure for eight minutes. All right. And then I use an immersion blender and I blend it up. Now, the last time I made it, I left it a little bit chunky. Jerry didn't like it. So I'm going to have to immersion blend it all the way to normal applesauce. I, I like it chunky. Okay. See here I put wait 15 minutes and release the steam. I can't believe these directions say that. People could get hurt really bad. And then I changed the directions some more. She calls for one teaspoon of cinnamon. I thought that was too much, so I'm putting one half teaspoon. She calls for a half cup of brown sugar. I don't like mine that sweet, so I'm doing one-fourth cup of brown sugar. And when I get it all done, if I taste it and it doesn't taste good, then I'll add some more sugar then. It says juice of one lemon. I'm using half a lemon. I didn't like the taste of one whole lemon. A cup of apple juice or apple cider, and I actually put water next to that. But today I have apple juice or apple cider, one or the other. And six pounds of apples peeled cord and cut into eight slices so i did this the first time it blew up all over the kitchen i did it the second time i decided i didn't like the taste of it so i made some changes there by the third time i decided this is crazy i'm not peeling these apples anymore and i bought myself on amazon this really cool apple peeler thing <laughs> it's awesome it's so much fun <laughs> And it has this little lever. I'll put this in my Amazon store under miscellaneous if it isn't already there. You know, I don't do a lot of cooking videos. I love to cook, and I cook every day, but I just don't do a lot of cooking videos. I mean, the kitchen gets so messy, and it's hard to set up the camera to follow yourself all over the kitchen. You know, someday when I have a professional camera person, <laughs> we'll do a lot more stuff. Ta-da! You have to have one of these things. Okay. And you have to have a cutting board and a knife. And I've got my purple knife. This was a gift somebody gave us. Got my apples. Now, it says six pounds of apples. I looked at a bag that wasn't open yet. And it says that there are three pounds of apples in here. So I'm going to take this bag and put it upstairs so I can eat it for snacks. And I'm going to use these two full bags. So I have a total of 16 apples. Here's what you do, Sue. I made tomato soup the other day. And Jerry loved it. And I invited Terry over. I said, do you like tomato soup? She said, I love it. And she came over. She said, oh my gosh, this is so good. It tastes like the tomato soup my mom used to make. So I have enough ingredients I can make it again. So next time I make tomato soup, I'll show you how I make it. Because it was delicious. I ate it like three meals in a row. And it makes a lot. So here's all my apples. And these are called Honey Crisp. 
and I think they are really good. And I have not made applesauce using Honey Crisp. I think the last time I used Gala apples. So we're going to use Honey Crisp today. Now let me see how are we going to do it. Oh, I haven't practiced. Oh, now when you do that, that makes it stick to the countertop. These countertops are soon going to be out of here. Can you believe that? These are brand spanking new. They've only been here a couple weeks. But they cut them wrong, and they got the sink in the wrong place, and they got the corners in the wrong place, and Jerry told them not to do it. He said, that's going to throw everything off. Don't do it. And the guy went out there, and he did it anyway. So the company agreed, yep, yeah, these are wrong, and we will completely redo them for you. So thank the Lord for that. I'm not going to wash the apples because they're going to all be peeled. All right, so I haven't used this in a while now. So what you do is, I wonder why there's a hole right there. Hmm, this is very strange. I may have to get the directions out. <laughs> oh, and you don't do something for a while. All right, let's, let's make it go down to the counter. Let me turn it. Go down to the counter. Let me get it over the sink. Stick it down and sneeze. Hey, got you! All right, let's try this. All right, there you go. Oh no, but now the apple wants to go through that little hole. That can't work. <laughs> I'm obviously doing something very wrong. Hold on, I'm gonna get the directions to this thing out. <laughs> it's called the Johnny Apple Peeler. All right, so that's right. That's what it looks like. So where the heck do you put the apple? Align, adjust, and secure blades. Where's the apple go? All right. So here's the apple. And here's the peeler. That doesn't seem right. Okay, if all else fails... Watch the lady do it on the internet. All right, she's got the apple way back here. All right, it's gonna turn. Now where's the peeler? Yeah, there's the peeler. So where's the apple gonna go? Oh, it's gonna core it. It's gonna core it. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I was doing your like to start with. Let's start over. I don't need that thing, y'all. Somebody said, your videos are so human. <laughs> oh, they're human, all right. Okay, so that's the deal, because that's the corner at the end of it. Hello, so let's just go again. Now, the first, look here, here's the core of the apple. Oh, that's awesome. Let me get my purple knife and get that off of there. Let's try the next one. I didn't have any trouble with this until I tried to make a video. <laughs> That's the way it works. Get off of there, mister. All right, so that's the core. Now this one didn't peel all the way, but that's probably because I screwed it up to start with. So you pull this, you put this off, you pull this down and you can just pull it back, see? And so now you put this on here. Oh, I can't believe it cores it, that is just so cool. Now let's try again and see if it'll peel the whole apple. Yes. See, so you can't start over. That's the thing, is you can't start over. Look at that. <laughs> that is so awesome. Ugh. So what we're going to end up with is a whole bunch of rings. See? Rings. I hope I didn't just cut the end of my finger off. This takes a little patience. <laughs> I'm not known for my patience, but... with things. So then you take take a paring knife, a little paring knife, and pare off the parts that didn't work. See, like that. Then I'm making this in my Take Forever pot. They call it an instant pot, but it's anything but instant, let me tell you. It takes it 15 minutes to even get to the point where you can cook something to build up the pressure. Yeah, just let me cut these off since I didn't know what the heck I was doing. You have to use these things more than once every five years. You know, like quilting, like making garments, 
you get away from it and you really just about have to start over. Mmm. 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 Those taste so good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lemon and I'm going to squish it over the apples now with this lemon squisher and try to keep them from all turning brown. Yeah. Let's do that. Put that down there until I need it again. All right, let's try another one, see if we can get it right. You push this down, you pull that back. Oh, it fell over. You shove this in, ah, and then you just cut. This is awesome the way it cores it. I forgot that it cores it, obviously. Look at that. Ah, look, now that's the way it's supposed to go, like that. And there'll be a little bit of peel left. Just peel it off or eat that piece. <laughs> These are really good apples. And just cut that in half and put it in the pot. The first time I made this, six pounds of apples, I peeled them all with one of these. Oh, it's not easy to get that off of there, but you have to. I've got some paper towels somewhere. Oh, I'm so glad to get my kid fixed up the way it's supposed to be. Frustrating. All right, maybe I didn't get that one in very centered. I'll try to center this one better. Oh, and look, this is, that's having an issue. Let's try again. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Sometimes it works right and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> now, if you have a little bit of apple peel left in your um, applesauce, would it really matter? I don't know. Apple peel, did I say that right? All right, let's get you off of there. I need to move my water spigot before I hit it with my hand. You're going to have apples everywhere. <laughs> my sink is full of them. Now I'm going to put a little more of this lemon on them. Keep them from turning. Because they'll turn brown, you know. They turn brown real fast. Mix them up. You want to see? See? And I'm just getting started. <laughs> this is a lot of applesauce. But applesauce freeze is good which is nice all right now that I've used this I'll tell you the thing about it you need to have firm apples one of my bags they were all firm and they peeled great but the second bag they're soft they're not spoiled but they're softer and they've got like some brown places in them if this ever hits one of those brown places it just tears the apple to pieces and it doesn't peel it good. See, this one has a spot right there. So, my Take Forever pot is this full. Now, I didn't use all the six pounds of apples because it's already to the maximum fill line, so I'm not going to cut up anymore. But this is what they look like so far. The rest of the ingredients are, as I told you, apple cider, I've already put the lemon in, brown sugar, and cinnamon. Now, I watch YouTube videos all the time. I don't ever, ever turn on the television. But I watch a lot of YouTube videos because I love to learn things. And some video that I watched said that whenever you use ground cinnamon, I was making bread, it said to put a little bit of ground cloves in and it makes the cinnamon more cinnamony. Cin cinnamon so I've been doing that and my bread tastes really good. Especially with those rum raisins in it. I may make enough of those for that today. All right, how much cinnamon does it say we have to have? It says we have to have a teaspoon, but I'm only putting half a teaspoon. Because I did not like my apples to taste like that much cinnamon. So, let me find half a teaspoon in here. Tablespoon. One half teaspoon. So I'm going to put one half teaspoon of cinnamon, and then I'm going to put like, now people ask me, how do you keep your house so clean? This is how. Instead of putting this down here, I'm done with it. So I, I try to teach this to, to my husband every day, and he just won't pay attention to me. 
He can organize things. He can make his barn so beautiful, everything put away. But every time he takes something off, he puts it down in the wrong place. And so the, all of his organization up there on that pegboard, there'll be a bunch of stuff missing and just empty spots because he didn't put something back where it goes. So I always put things back right away. Now the ground cinnamon doesn't go there. There's another ground cinnamon in here if I remember right. Maybe not. Roll it around and around, right here, cinnamon. That's where the cinnamon goes. So, next is the clothes. So this one has a shaker on it. So I'm just going to shake a little bit, like that. Because the clothes make the cinnamon, cinnamon more cinnamon, cinnamony. And here's my ball cloth, and that's where my ground clothes go. So see, that's it, I'm done with that. Jerry's pharmacist, you know. And back when he had a pharmacy, he was that way then. He would go back and get the pills off the shelves. And at the end of the day, every single bottle he filled a prescription for that day was on the counters, all over the counters. And every night, he had to stop and put all of those pill bottles back up, or his, his girls did. And I used to say, why don't you just put it back right now? Oh, joy, oh, joy. So anyhow, we don't want to go there. Now, one half teaspoon cinnamon, brown sugar. And I said, add when done if needed. But last time I did need it, so I'm going to put a quarter cup. A quarter cup. How much does she say to put a brown sugar? She says to put a half cup. I'm going to put a quarter cup. Let me get a quarter cup. I keep a piece of bread in my brown sugar. See? I take the crust off my bread and I put it in my brown sugar. And it keeps it soft forever. You may get a little couple of breadcrumbs in there, but who cares? Now see, I'm going to put this back where it goes. I'm not going to leave it on the counter. I'm not going to put it back there. I'm going to put it where it goes. Now I can't put this up because it's dirty. <laughs> so this is going to go right back in here where I got it. Okay, so I got the sugar. What's next? It's got water on it, apples on it. <laughs> juice of a lemon, one cup apple juice. Now I had sideburns bring me home some apple juice. And I don't really like it. It says no sugar added, but who knows? Let me shake it up just in case. So it wants how much of that? One cup. So let me get a one cup. My one cups are right here. <laughs> one cup of. All right, there's the cup. Right there. One cup of apple juice. I think to use this take forever pot. Now remember, it's called an instant pot, but I call it a uh, take forever. Let's put this where it goes, Joy. In the fridge. My little great grandson, Luke. Pumpkin pants loves apple juice, but we dilute it. It's a, you know, one-fourth apple juice and the rest water. <laughs> oh, that's going to go in the dishwasher. Okie doke. Is that everything you're supposed to put? The apples, the apple juice, the lemon, the sugar, and the cinnamon. Add all the ingredients to the pot and mix. Close the lid, select pressure cook, and cook on high pressure for eight minutes. Now, I had to learn the hard way. Eight minutes doesn't mean eight minutes. Eight minutes could be 30 minutes, and probably will be, or more. 15 minutes to come to pressure. Eight minutes to cook. 15 minutes to let the pressure go back down. So, add that up. That's why I say they should call it the take forever pot. So, let's make it, mix, mix it. <laughs> she said to mix it. Woo, heavy. I don't know how we got one bag of really firm apples and one bag of not so firm apples, but we did. That was a piece that had peeling on it, so I tossed it. Ooh, this looks good like you could just eat it like this. It was delicious. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, that's mixed up. There you go, Joe. Let me turn you around to where the Take River pot is. 
Pardon my phone, I turned it off. The problem with me turning my phone off is I always forget to turn it back on. <laughs> Maybe weeks later, I turned it back. I tell Jerry, nobody's texting me, nobody's emailing me, nobody's doing anything. <laughs> and then somebody will say, I've been trying to. All right, so you put that on there and you flip it like that. Then you go, pressure cook. Then you go eight minutes. Now this is another thing I had to learn about this take forever pot. You can see I just put the eight in there. But when I tell it to start, which I already did tell it to start, go. It's on high pressure, there it goes. See it says on, the timer goes off. And I started this over and over and over when I first got it because I thought, oh no, the time is gone. I don't know how long to do. So this is why I call it the take forever pot. I'm gonna put it out here on the edge so I can turn it out and blow the steam out here instead of up on the cabinets later. But this is easy to turn, see, if it's hot, which it will be. <laughs> well, since it was noon, I decided to go ahead and eat my lunch. And so now, <laughs> Jerry and I get these new things that are so darling. Look at that. It was about up to here. I had to go over to the coach to get it. But there are many ice creams. <laughs> they are so darling. We just love them. I bought three boxes of them last time we were at Walmart. I need to go get 50 boxes. Mmm. Okay, we're on L for liftoff. And I'm waiting. She says not to wait, to just open it. No, no, don't do that. I'm waiting for 15. Mmm. You know, they can't pack that many calories in something this tiny. How are we doing? We're on 12. It's almost to 15. I guess you could just let it go to 20 or 30 or 40 or forever. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you how I do it. Because of the applesauce day. Oh my goodness. That was a terrible day. I'm going to put one of these on. I actually have a green one that comes all the way up to here, but it's in the laundry. So, now we're at 15. So, we are going to release the pressure, but I'm going to put this towel on it. And I'm going to turn it like this. So the pressure goes up out here and not all over the cabinets. That is if you can remember where the knob is. Aha, did you see that? I need to put it on my other hand. <laughs> where are you? Oh. All right. So no applesauce spewing everywhere this time, thank goodness. There you go. Look at how much is left. Imagine if I had opened that up right away when it was done with its eight minutes of cooking. That's dangerous. Look, there's some applesauce coming out of there, too. It's cooking applesauce now. And I waited 15 minutes. Pioneer one would need to change her directions because that is majorly dangerous. And you have to wait until there's this little silver thing that sticks up back there. And you have to wait till it falls down flat. Yeah, look at it. It's still spewing applesauce. It's just unbelievable. I think maybe put less apples. And I didn't even put as much as she said to put in here. She said to put six pounds. And I did not put all of two bags. And the bags are three pounds each. That is terrible. Applesauce everywhere. Well. There's applesauce all over the top of that little knob. You see that silver thing right there? I can't. <laughs> There's a silver thing, watch it. Watch it fall. You can't do anything until that falls down. Look, it just fell down. See? It's down flat. So now we can safely open the pot. And it's now, I think this means lift off is what that means. Or it means L O L, and they didn't have room for the other L. <laughs> so let's turn it. Woo! Lid. It says lid. Ah. It's not hot. Oh my goodness! You want to see inside? <laughs> Woo! Howdy! I'm going to take the camera off of the tripod and show you the inside. Ready, set, look. Oh, L, O, L might mean look. Look. <laughs> oh, doesn't it look good? 
Now see, I'd like to take the immersion thing and just chop it up a little bit. But Jerry wants it totally, totally chopped up like applesauce, so I'll have to do that. So let's go get the immersion blender and immerse it. I'll be back. So in case you don't know, this is an immersion blender. And you can put it down in a hot, a pan of hot food and mix it up, blend it, chop it all up. But, 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 be sure when you do, you keep it down underneath the liquid. Because if you lift it up, you will immerse the whole kitchen. This, go, this goes in here like that. Then you plug it in the wall. I'm sure you all know what this is. There's a high and a low, and I'm going to do low. So put it in underneath. There's a lot of liquid in here. Underneath. And you can hold it just as you... Oh, I'm going to take my glove off because I can't do the buttons with it on. You have to hold it in. My goodness, this sure did reduce. It reduced a bunch, y'all. That doesn't work good. Let's turn it this way. This way, it leans on your hand. See the hook there? You have to lean it on your hand. Then you have to hold the button. Yeah, like that. Because you have to hold it in, which is good. Jerry wants it all chopped up. It's got a lot of liquid in it. See there? Now we got applesauce. What does it taste like? It smells wonderful. And if there's any chunks left, those will be for me. Okay, so that's how I do it. So it's still really, really hot, but I promised you, you could taste it. So let's get some out. All right, Jerry's here, so you have to taste it quick. Mmm. Mmm, it's tart. It's very tart. Mmm. What do you think? It smells good. Mmm, it smells delicious. I think maybe it's just because it's so hot. Probably so. But um, I'm going to go ahead and wash this, let that cool, and then I'll let Sideburns taste a little bit of it and see if he wants more sugar. Okay, so now i got to go upstairs and put that binding on. So I added another quarter cup of dark brown sugar to my applesauce. So in your recipe, put one half cup brown sugar. It's perfect. It's wonderful. So Jerry loves applesauce. Close your blades. Look what came. Look what the ups man brought me. This wasn't supposed to be here till Wednesday or Thursday. I just love Amazon. This is the ruler that you do your flying geese with. And when I figure it out in a little while, <laughs> actually I'll just tell, oh look, there's directions. How handy is that? And you can make a one by two, which is what I need. Awesome. Awesome. Does it show you how to put the ruler? Huh. It looks like... You put the ruler pointing up on your inside triangle first and trim, trim. And then you turn the ruler around or you turn the block around and you put it going down and then you trim, trim. So, awesome ruler, Creative Grids. I don't know, $15 or something. And it's very nice. This is Creative Grids. And I didn't realize that Creative Grids had the non-flip grips on them. I don't think any of my rulers do, but they must have decided to catch up with Quilter Select. Awesome! I can't wait to make my, um, you know what it's for? It's for my stars. It's to make these with. These little uh, flying geese. One, two, three, four flying geese in each star. So I'm going to make one, and then I'll show you how you cut. Yay! <laughs> I decided to just end this Snippetville video right here because I'm getting ready to make a video showing you how I put on binding and it's going to take a long time and it already took me forever to make applesauce it took way longer than you just watched it 
<laughs> but the applesauce is wonderful. <laughs> so I'm going to end this right here. And my next video is going to be about how I put bindings on. I'll see you there.